Hi ladies and gentlemen, Sean Davies of Colorado Rainsman. I am here today with a very special little horse. This is Tohota. And Tohota came from Colorado Horse Rescue Network here. They're a, a great network of folks that are, you know, helping horses out in the local area. And Tohota was pulled out of the local auction as a three-year-old stallion. And we're thinking either you know, an appendix, quarter horse, or thoroughbred. Um, he's been gelded now just a few weeks ago. When I got the call about this horse um, from Whitney Applegate, who's uh, one of the primary folks in that, she said she got a horse that might be a little bit scary, and uh, she wanted me to come out and take a look at him. Well, I came out and looked at this horse, and when I saw him, he had scars and rope burns all over his front legs. He had a diagonal scar and scabby rope burn right down diagonally above his uh, left hind hock. You can see that he has a very short chopped tail. He also has kind of a butchered bridle path up here. And when I took a look at this horse, it took me about two minutes to tell Whitney that my feeling is you have a horse that was used in the uh, traditional Mexican rodeo as a tripping horse. So for those of you who do not know what uh, tripping horses are, they are horses that have been used in uh, the traditional Mexican rodeo. Um, as uh, horses that the big loop ropers are throwing ropes either around the front legs or around their neck and coming around behind them and jerking their legs out and the whole idea is to knock that horse down and for some reason anybody I say anybody who loves horses that is involved in that activity um, I don't know what to say about them I just I shake my head at it because I could never imagine doing that myself. Now this guy, he was only three, had his whole life ahead of him. We're surprised right now this horse will even let people touch him. He was very fearful. Um, he's still very fearful about certain things. So I'm going to work with, uh, with him for the first time today. I did about five minutes the other day just get an idea. I let him settle in here. Um, as you see, he's also fairly thin, so we've been feeding him pretty good, got him on a fat supplement. I actually started him on um, an ulcer medication because I have a feeling this horse has probably uh, got ulcers, among other things. He moves around pretty good. I think he'll be due for some chiropractic. You know, when you get your legs jerked out from underneath him, you smash through the ground as a good-sized horse very good chance this horse is just all out of whack somewhere so we're probably going to get quite a few things done um, Colorado Horse Rescue, Rescue Network has gotten a training grant for him but any other donations that go towards him I will put a, uh, a little deal at the end of the video that if you'd like to donate towards his care and chiropractic and hoof care and some supplements for him I'm going to put that there for you um, He's a sweet horse, and I'm hoping that I can, you know, we've got him for about four months, so I'm going to hope that I can give this horse, you know, enough of a, a mindset that not everybody's going to be mean to him, not everybody's going to do crazy stuff that hurts him. I'm surprised he's sound. They pulled another horse the next week that was broken, had a, a fractured hock and had to be put down. Um, I think he's got a good future if he if he gets some good work. So, you know, we're gonna do just a little bit of moving around now. So I'm gonna pick up my stick here, and you're gonna notice some things that remember that most of these ropes are coming from low up on his legs. So he gets a little nervous about things down low. This horse is also three years old. The other thing that I kind of thought that this horse might have had done was he also could have been a short track racehorse 
he did not like to get in trailers. He was freaking out about trailers a little bit. Um, he did load for me fine, but uh, around here they have little short track race courses that are you know non-sanctioned. They do a lot of betting there. And this course could have been run on the track as a three-year-old stud, and he may not have been fast enough. This horse could have been run on that short track racetrack, and he uh, probably was forced into some, uh, you know, four horse or six horse starting gates, and he just didn't like that anymore. And he either wouldn't get in a gate, or maybe he wasn't fast enough. So then they sold him to the Mexican rodeo guys, and or big loop ropers, as they like to call themselves. Um, they say that 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 tripping is a traditional sport. And I, I sometimes hate that word tradition. A lot of unpleasant things are done in the, uh, you know, under the uh, guise of tradition. So I think that's a tradition that we could stop if we have any kind of humanity to ourselves at all. But we're going to move him around, see what he can do, see how afraid he is. Can I get him to overcome? This horse probably doesn't have any basic training at all. So we're going to see. You can see he's kind of pushy, likes to push on me. He's also a baby, just a big baby, and he's going to grow a lot. So we really hope that he can have a future. So I'm going to start working with him here in a second, so stay tuned. So I'm always here with my little horseman stick, my little cheapy lightweight stick in my target bag. And I showed this to him the other day, and I'm going to show it to him again today. Let him see it. I'll rub him with it. So for five minutes, I moved this horse around the other day and already he's better about this. And you can see right there when I extended it out, when I'm rubbing him, he got a little nervous. But see, he's moving his feet and I'm rubbing him and he went, oh, well that's not killing me. I will let him move his feet and rub him. You know, there's no telling what's going on with this horse's joints and rear end. So I definitely want to get some chiropractic on him soon. Good boy. I'm going to bring this stick around this side. See his right side's a little bit more, a little bit more reactive. So I'm going to come in here, reassure him, let him see my stick and, and bag. Go right back to rubbing his neck on this side, and I'm going to go right back to rubbing him here. He can move his feet if he wants to. After he was gelded, he was out in the pasture a little bit, up in Berkeley, Colorado, at Whitney's place. And she did tell me that some folks across the road pulled out the roping dummy and started dragging around and roping it. And he saw that, and he got real nervous. So I think one of the things I'm going to have to get him to overcome is not to freak out at the sight of a rope because, man, people are going to have ropes around sometimes. I don't blame him. Personally, I don't blame him whatsoever. I mean, we're lucky we can even be in here doing anything with him without him trying to kill us. But his nature is pretty darn sweet. You know, he does get to be a little bit of a butthead about going through gates and stuff, but, you know, those are things that any three-year-old can do. Can have. So I switch sides there. Good boy. See, these are the things that we got to overcome with him. I got to make sure he doesn't run me over. That's switching from one side to another. Right here, I got to really 
control my energy. can take it away, maybe it's not such a big deal. This first month with this horse, a lot of this first month is going to be just trying to convince him that everything around is not going to kill him. Put it on this side. Put it on that side. So I want to be careful because if he strikes and stomps at it, then I don't want to be in the way. Now, I'm going to start teaching him some basic things. Stop. Back up. That's good enough. Reward. Who's a good boy? This little guy, there's no difference dealing with him than dealing with a, a, a child that's been horribly physically abused and battered. You've got to deal with the psyche just as much as the physical part. Now, but, I also want to say this. I'm not going to let this horse push me around. I'm not going to let him get stupid. I'm going to put energy on him that says, if I need you to get back, you must get back. If I want you to come to me, I want you to come to me and stop. Just because they're abused, don't treat them like it's uh, unicorns and flowers because you're not doing them any favors. You can be kind to them. We are kind to him. But when it comes to training, I've got to prepare him for a future with people. That's the important part. He's got to learn that he does not get to freak out all the time. He does not get to run you over. He does not get to rear up and land on your head. Those things, they'll, he'll end up in an unpleasant place again or being put down. And we don't want either one of them. Um, this rescue network's not going to allow him to get in an unpleasant place, but if he turned out to be a dangerous horse, then the kindest thing for him would be to euthanize him. So we're not going to go there. We're going to get him where he needs to be. Now right now, I'm just getting him used to moving around. So I'm going to raise my stick right here and let him move that way. And I'm going to change it. And I'm going to ask him to move this way. And he kind of braces right there. So I'm going to give him a doorway out. There we go. And he took the doorway. I doubt this horse has ever been properly taught to work. Now I'm asking him to go forward. I'm giving him all that territory there to go. I'm looking there. My body says go there. My stick closes this door. And now, five minutes the other day, he was pulling on this lead rope. And when he learned that that was not going to get him anywhere, today he's just as soft as can be. So I'm thrilled with him. Ask him to try. I'm going to ask him to walk. I'm magical. It's my Harry Potter wand. I'm going to ask him to try. Stand up tall. Give me one kiss. Raise my flag a little bit. Give me one kiss. Good boy. Good boy. Let him come down. Magical stuff right there. I'm going to pick up. I'm going to step towards his rear end. I'm going to close this door and walk him over. 
Now, if you guys have been watching my videos for the last five or six or seven years, you're going to see this same movement all the time. Why do I need to change something if it works? I spent five minutes with him the other day and he was jerking and rearing up like he was doing there earlier and now he's not. This right side he's nowhere near as confident on. I'm looking at his movement to see if I can see any pain in it. So far I don't see too much, but I would definitely like to get him chiropractic adjusted. Just to get an idea, but I also have to get him tame enough to where he won't you know, do anything silly with the chiropractor. Good bull. I like the way he picks up his front feet. This guy could have a great future in a lot of disciplines. We'll see. Right there, I'm not going to let him turn back in on me. I'm saying go forward. Good boy. I'm going to change my tool. I'm going to pick up. Step towards his rear end. Walk, 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 walk that. That's to come through. Good boy. Change my tool. Pick up. Drop that front end. Let's go this way. If this is all I get today, I'm happy. See right there, I kind of closed my hand and said, no, you can't run off. And he gave. Pick up. Move, move, move. See, I'm giving him all that chance to figure it out right there. And he's licking and chewing, and he's going, okay, man, I'm starting to get the hang of this stuff. Change my tool. Pick up. Close my fingers off that pole. Good boy. Driving forward. Driving forward. Now I'm going to stop him. And pick up. And back him up. Yep, back up. I'm going to let him think about everything right there because that was all really nice. That was all really nice. Good boy. He's a big baby. Good boy. And you see this guy just wants to follow. Now see right there, you kind of, I'm going to ask him to move right there. He wants to run over us a little bit. But I'm saying, young man, just relax. And you'll be fine. We'll get along. I'm going to do something real quick because I want to see where we're at severity wise with ropes. And I'm going to take this rope and rub it on him. And I'm just going to toss that rope up there. Wow. The other horse that was pulled from the auction the next week had exactly the same short chopped tail, the exact same burns on the leg, and what I mean by that is you can see a white line right down diagonally above his hock, and uh, let me see if I can get that near close for the camera. may be able to see that diagonal white line. That was one big wide scab from a rope burn where they rope their neck, ride their horse around behind him, and trip those legs out from underneath the horse. Now traditionally that's how they used to catch wild horses in, in Mexico. But that's not what we're doing here. They're doing this for fun and the crowd screams. Search on YouTube for uh, chariada big loop roping or horse tripping and you'll see some unpleasant videos of what this horse went through. So I'm going to ask him, does a rope around his leg bother him? You can see right there, you can see that reaction. 
guess what? I have to get him to where that won't be such a reaction. Good boy. See, this horse already understands that I'm not trying to hurt him. Good boy. That's all I'm going to do with that today. This is our first time really doing some work. So I don't want to push him too hard. We don't want to stress him out. That's kind of why I, uh, you can see this right side. So if they were roping his neck and coming around that side, this is where the ropes would hit him. He does have some scars up on his shoulders where he probably fell down on the ground. How this horse is walking, I don't know, because most of them are broken up. You can see these scrapes and scars right there on his the shoulders, and I think a lot of that may have been from hitting the ground. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. These are things he has to overcome. Because your rain is going to drop down. Your, you're going to drop a lariat one day or you're going to drop your rain. We don't want him freaking out if they get around the leg. Good boy. Good boy. got some tight spots in his spine so that's where some body work and some uh, good chiropractic will help him. Right young man? I'm ask him to do a couple basic maneuvers here. See if we can get him to disengage his hind end. See, all of these things I want to see if he can do without freaking out. Okay. See, he doesn't know this stuff. He's a three-year-old baby. I'm going to ask him to relax. Good boy. that one more time on this side. Pick up, hold his head and shoulder up, walk towards his rear end looking for this inside hind to step underneath diagonally while his front feet walk a small circle. And boy that's pretty dang good. Where's the baby? Young man. Yes sir Junior. That wasn't too bad. Now don't be, see he likes to block that right side. He's really a little nervous about this right side, so we're gonna have to really overcome things. I wanna get him stabilized before I do the movement. So if I gotta stand here and rub his neck until he stops, that's what I gotta do. There we go. I'm asking to drive forward and underneath. There's one, there's two, there's three. I'm gonna let him stop right there. Who's a big boy? Who's a big boy? I'm going to pet the side that I'm working there. A lot of times I'll pet that other side because I want his head to come through eventually. This horse is extremely forgiving. Extremely forgiving. I probably wear the same hat as some of those guys that threw ropes on him and slammed him to the ground. How he even looks at me and lets me get in the round pen with him is quite extraordinary. Other than he can just tell the difference between my energy and theirs. He is also not crazy about young male children. Because if he was at that rodeo, he might have been kind of tortured by young male children. Doesn't mind little girls. Good 
boy. Good boy. Boy, he's just doing everything I ask him to do. But there are going to be things that freak him out. I'm going to ask him to see if he can come up here and go laterally. Let's see if he'll learn. So right there, he wants to push through. Now, I would be doing him a disservice if I let him push through me right there. Now, I'm going to ask him to step over. There's one. There's two. He's starting his massage career. That's good enough for me right there. Good boy. <laughs> There we go. Get over. Get over. There's one. There's two. I'm not going to let him go when he reacts. I just want him to step diagonally. He's kind of sidestepping. There's one. There's two. Come on, one more. There's a good boy. This whole right side, it's just balled up with tension. As he gets better and better with some of these moves, that's going to disappear. He's going to relax. He's going to say, okay, I can handle it. He's going to say, I can deal with that. I don't know if this horse has ever been ridden. You know, I'm speculating about the racetrack because that's usually where a lot of the horses that look like him come from that gets sold to the Mexican rodeo. Now, he doesn't understand lateral flexion so much, so let's see if I can get him to bend without moving. I'm going to lower my expectations. Let's just get him to go right there. Good boy. Let's pick him up, tip his nose out, right there. Good boy. step on my toe and right there I let him go he was starting to move but he bent a lot better so I said that's pretty darn good who's a big baby he's going I'm starting to kind of like this stuff now he wants to move I got to hold my hand in that same position until he quits moving right there Ask him to bend a little bit, hold for a second until he gives. If he backs up, I'm going to go with him. He says, I'm backing up. You guys are bothering me. And oh, look at that all the way. All the way around. That was beautiful, young man. That was beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, this right side may be just a little different. He's a little nervous about you even standing on this side. So, if I get half of what I just got on that other side, I'm going to be happy. See, he wants to kind of face me. With these mentally and physically scarred horses, you have to be calmer than you've ever been in your life. Right there, good boy. I've got to let him know that the old stuff is gone. This is the new. 
right there. I'm going to hold that rope, not let him take it from me. Just keep positioning myself right here by the shoulder, or right behind the shoulder. I'm looking for him to stop and bend his head. He bent his head, but he didn't stop. Now I want to just look right down here and say, you can stop right there, young man, and bend your head. There you go. There you go. There you go. Who's a good boy? He's calling on me right there. Saying, don't pull on me. Just give to that pressure. There you go. And that's what I'm looking for. Who's your big baby man? I'm asking him to just relax his head, bend it down and around. We're talking about bridling a horse up now. Going, oh, I don't know if I like that. Good boy. Let him go. So I'm not going to turn him loose today in the round pin free because I've gotten everything I've asked this horse to do. He's done for me with flying colors. You know, you can see where he gets a little worried at certain things. But between all the scars and the, see these leg scars down here, they may grow some hair back. But when I first saw him, you can still see the rope burn lines on his legs where they were all scabbed up. And, uh, yeah, he's got a lot of burns all over his legs. And he's a forgiving boy. Let me see if I can just ask him to pick his foot up. Good boy. When I get his feet real good, I'm going to rasp his feet up nice. Get him all squared away. So you're going to see a lot of this young man over the next four months. We're going to see if we can't rehabilit rehabilitate this horse. And uh, we're going to put him in a lot of positions. We're going to give him the opportunity to get silly. We're also going to give him the opportunity to overcome. And I think we can. i got high hopes for him. Just like I've got high hopes for all these other little troubled souls that we get in. And uh, he's going to be wonderful. So ladies and gentlemen, Sean Davies, Colorado Rainsman, stay tuned.